Namaste. Good afternoon to all the viewers. This is Dr. Aparna. I am your emotional healing synergist. I am an Ayurvedic psychotherapist, a passionate infoprener, edupreneur, and medical writer. In my pursuit to address, promote, and propagate Ayurveda and psychotherapy globally, uh, I come up with new topics every week for discussion on either Ayurveda or mental health or psychotherapy. So today's topic of discussion is a continuation on our previous series, uh, previous uh, session on stress. We had talked about what is stress, what is eustress and what is distress, what are the causes uh, and types of stress, how does stress affect the body and the mind. So if you want, you can refer to the previous session of the stress. The links will be provided in the description. So today's topic of discussion is stress management. So how to manage stress and how do we do that in our setup? And uh, I'll give you some, uh, you know, um, tips to manage stress, uh, self-help uh, techniques and to manage at home and how do we manage here with some case studies so uh, without wasting time let's get started so stress just to uh, give a bit of you know uh, recap see stress uh, in the context of human psychology refers to the body's response to demands or pressures from the environment it is the body's response to um, you know, pressures from the environment. It is a natural and instinctive reaction that evolved to help individuals cope with challenges or threats. So to define stress is a state of mental or emotional strain resulting from adverse or demanding circumstances. So it involves the body's uh, physiological and psychological responses to challenges often causing feelings of tension, anxiety, and a sense of being overwhelmed. So here, you know, uh, how to, so then how to manage stress? See, stress management is a process. It cannot be achieved in a day or two. So that involves recognizing and coping with the various stressors and pressures we experience in life to cope with the stress and pressure. So it encompasses a wide range of techniques and strategies aimed at reducing or eliminating the negative effects of stress on our mental, emotional and physical well-being. So um, by effectively managing stress, we can improve our overall quality of life, increase productivity and maintain better relationships with others. So I uh, see below, uh, see, I'm giving you some key con components and strategies that are involved in stress management. So what we do in the beginning. So I understanding stress. So the first step in stress management is to recognize and understand what is what stress is that we have done in the previous session. So uh, as I said, the body's natural response to Stress is the body's natural response to challenging situations or triggers. So, um, see, um, and uh, psychological reaction of uh, stress may, may also be known as f fight or flight response. So, it may uh, fi fight or flight responses may also trigger stress. So, I have discussed fight or flight response in the previous session as well. Uh, stressors can be external, that is work-related stress, financial stress, stress um, because of financial issues, stress because of relationships or internal. Internal stress is negative thoughts, worries or overthinking that is uh, related to mind. So after you understand stress, you have to identify the stressors. So pinpointing the specific stressors in your life is crucial. So what exactly is the is causing you stress? It could be a particular situation, a person 
or ongoing circumstances that trigger stress. So, uh, because of a situation or a circumstance you might have experiencing stress, because of a person or in a professional setup, because of your senior colleagues or junior colleagues or whatever, or in personal life, or because of a person uh, closer to you or your friend, or ongoing circumstance that, that may trigger stress. So, you have to know what is causing you stress what is the stressor keeping a stress journal can help you track these stresses and identify patterns so if you experience stress uh, on a daily basis you can keep a journal and write note start noting it down what is that which is causing you stress the next thing which is needed for every you know uh, every mental or physical condition is the healthy lifestyle and diet so adopting a healthy lifestyle and diet can significantly reduce stress levels see when we talk of diet and lifestyle both should be sustainable uh, not like aisa nahi hona chahiye ki aapne aaj kiya kal kiya aur aap continue nahi kar paaye usko you are not able to continue that you know lifestyle or diet it should always be sustainable uh, and uh, you know to you have to do it lifelong so that uh, lifestyle you have to adopt adopt this includes regular exercise balanced diet sufficient sleep and avoiding excessive consumption of alcohol caffeine and nicotine physical activity see role of physical activity is you can choose whatever physical activity you want to if you want to walk you can walk if you want to do yoga you can do yoga if you want to go to gym you can go to gym you if you want to dance you can dance you can swim you can go to zumba and aerobics whatever exercise you choose physical what uh, you have to you know you have to be happy and you have to be always uh, excited and energetic to do that whether it is a whether it is any form of exercise because when you are happy and when you are doing physical activity it releases endorphins they act as natural stress relievers that's why physical activity is important it doesn't mean that you spend two or three hours every day in a gym then i'll be healthy no it is not like that you need a form of physical exercise which is sustainable and which you love doing and if you don't feel the burden of doing it rather than you uh, relish doing it so next is after healthy lifestyle and diet it is a time management majorly um, a poor time management can lead to overwhelming feelings of stress if you don't know um, if you cannot manage your time productively you know it can lead to overwhelming feelings and then later lead to stress so learning to prioritize tasks set realistic goals and organize your schedule see for organizing your schedule you might you may opt for uh, journaling you can write your uh, tasks prior in a uh, in a diary or in a book or in a notepad or what you can do is there are several apps which can help you organize your schedule so uh, then what you have what you feel is you feel more in control and reduce stress and you don't have overwhelming feelings okay i have to do this i have to do this i have to do this you know that this is the time when you do this you have to prioritize it according to your time and you can use mind maps as well and mind maps i've discussed in two sessions in earlier so you can uh, you know refer to those two sessions uh, for you know uh, time management as well you can draw mind maps and you can manage time as well and what you can do is next is relaxation techniques so relaxation techniques include here incorporating uh, it into daily routine so uh, so what happens is if you incorporate relaxation techniques into your daily routine it can help counteract stress so techniques like deep breathing exercises progressive muscle relaxation meditation yoga and mindfulness and what i've talked about is i have talked about pratyahara in my um uh, 
previous sessions in one of my previous sessions you can refer to that session of as well so it also you know uh, talks about withdrawing of the senses and mind control so these also can help this is also a form of relaxation technique which can help you know calm uh, your calm your stress down and reduce the anxiety so incorporating relaxation techniques so deep breathing exercises pranayama and muscle relaxation uh, activities yoga meditation mindfulness that is pratyahara all can be incorporated into your daily life see it might be only you do you can do it only for 15 to 20 minutes every day it is not necessary that uh, you burden yourself with um, the exercises as well it can also be limited but it has to be consistent it has to be performed every day uh, and it it has to be sustainable whatever routine you have it has to be realistic and sustainable whatever goal you make it has to be smart that is specific measurable adaptable and uh, you know time bound Ev everything all this must be there when you whenever you plan something so and social support so for uh, you know managing stress maintaining strong social connections and seeking support from friends family or support groups can help in managing stress there are many support groups for anxiety as well as depression if you search you will get to know and talking about your feelings and concerns with others can be therapeutic and provide a fresh perspective here talking to others in the sense the people you trust or the close knit people it may be your family it may be your friend or it may be any group member uh, it may be whoever but the person you trust you know and uh, positive thinking so cultivating a positive mindset and practicing gratitude can counteract negative thoughts and stress yeah uh, practicing gratitude is thanking for whatever you have you know okay i have instead of cribbing of what you don't have thank thanking uh, you know for whatever you have expressing or practicing gratitude also can con counteract negative thoughts and stress focusing on the positive aspects of life keeping a gratitude journal you can uh, always you know journaling is always a good habit uh, if you uh, imbibe it or inculcate inculcate it and incorporate it in your daily life uh, it will uh, make your life more productive and peaceful so and reframing negative situations can improve resilience to the stress and you can also add affirmations positive affirmations that uh, i will do it i uh, whatever uh, you know positive affirmations you can you can add positive affirmations as well when um, we are uh, talking of stress or any mental health issue uh in particular and problem solving skills so developing effective problem solving skills can reduce stress related to challenges and obstacles um you know uh, challenges and obstacles so breaking down problems into manageable steps brainstorming solutions and taking action can empower you to tackle st stress you know stress inducing situations so and uh, you know having boundaries and saying no some people you know cannot uh, say no and cannot set boundaries so learning to set boundaries and saying no whenever it is necessary can prevent over commitment and overwhelming overwhelming situations don't over commit to anything so as i said have realistic work schedule or have realistic Mm, you know and um, uh, measurable and smart goals and commitments so that you you can say no whenever it is needed and you can set boundaries whenever it is necessary you know to prevent over commitment and overwhelming situation and humor and laughter humor and laughter also has been um, you know significantly proven in uh, reducing stress so 
humor and laughter have been shown to reduce stress and release tension engaging in activities that bring joy and laughter can be a helpful stress management tool and uh, as i said practice mindfulness and meditation and uh, you know and connect with others as well you know, you know share your feelings as i said with the, and concerns with the trusted friends family or support groups social support can be comforting during stressful times social support is a support group where people you know are having similar problems people with similar problems like you like uh, um, you know sit and can brainstorm uh, talk about their uh, problems and get a um, resolution and you know getting enough sleep is also very very important this is you know uh, often um, skipped a uh, uh, thing prioritize quality sleep and it helps the body and mind to recover from stress maintain a consistent sleep schedule and create a relaxing bedtime routine have a bedtime routine and go to sleep and wake up uh, on you know at the same time every day have a schedule and engage in hobbies like spend time doing uh, activities you enjoy whether it's reading painting gardening so develop skills and develop enhance your skills and engage in hobbies whatever it is hobbies provide an outlet for stress relief so, you know cultivating and developing hobbies and skills can you know um, help in stress relief so next is um limit media consumption so social media consumption um, you know you have to uh, install either digital well beings nowadays there are digital well being apps in your uh, mobile phones pick to take breaks from the news and social media as excessive exposure can contribute to stress and anxiety you know um so uh, the phones limit phone and media as much as you can so and take professional help this is the most important thing these uh, above which i said uh, are the things you can you know try uh, doing it uh, at your space but this professional help if stress becomes overwhelming or persists despite your efforts seeking the help of a mental health professional such as therapist or a counselor can pro provide additional support and coping strategies so you know uh, consult a therapist or a counselor uh, or a psychiatrist if you are you know in need of uh, support and um, um all my co consultations are online so you can consult me as well um and uh, remember that stress is a natural part of life and complete elimination is always uh, possible the goal of stress management is to build resilience and develop effective coping mechanisms to navigate life's challenges in a healthier and more balanced way so um you know uh psych what is the role of next i'm gonna talk about what is the role of psychotherapy in uh or you know counseling uh in managing stress so what we do in psychotherapy so psychotherapy uh also i've talked about in my earlier sessions so you can refer uh my session on that as well so psychotherapy is also known as talk therapy or counseling plays a significant role in managing stress and related mental health issues it involves a collaborative and therapeutic relationship between a trained mental health professional and an individual seeking help so psychotherapy aims to explore and address the underlying causes of stress identify coping strategies and promote emotional well-being so what uh, stress uh, psychotherapy uh, does is uh it actually help it, it actually aims to explore and address the underlying cause of stress and it helps identifying coping strategies and promote emotional well-being so um 
uh, see what we do is we identify stress so stress identification is important psychotherapy helps individuals identify the sources of their stress and understand how it if affects their thoughts emotions and behaviors by gaining insight into the root causes of stress what we do is we get to the root cause of the stress so that treating stress becomes easier so um you know by gaining insight into the root cause of the stress individuals can develop healthier ways to cope with the challenges they face then after you identify stress so coping strategies so coping strategies is that therapists teach coping skills that are tailored to the individual's unique needs and circumstances They're, these are the coping strategies are customizable it is uh, according to the you know individuals uh, needs and circumstances according to the condition so these strategies may include we also advise you know for the relaxation techniques mindfulness exercises there are cognitive restructuring exercises so we have so many exercises and tasks uh, you know to be done and uh, what it does is cognitive restructuring uh, uh, is very uh, is some they some of them are challenging and they reframe negative thoughts and uh, divert your negative thoughts to positive thoughts and problem solving skills so learning these tools empowers individuals to better handle stress in their daily life then we concentrate on remo uh, emotional regulation so stress often leads to overwhelming emotions such as anxiety anger or sadness psychotherapy helps individuals recognize and regulate these emotions in a healthy and constructive manner preventing them from becoming unmanageable and causing harm so emotional regulation is stress often leads to overwhelming emotions right so what happens is with stress increases the anxiety increases the anger increases the sadness so what we do is psychotherapy helps individuals recognize and regulate these emotions in a healthy and constructive manner preventing from uh, them from becoming unmanageable or causing harm so what we do next is after emotional uh, regulation support and validation talking to a therapist provides a safe and non judgmental space to ex feel express feelings so uh so what happens is a therapist is a non judgmental authority so you it provides you a safe and non judgmental space to express your feelings and concerns which are related to stress so the therapist offers validation empathy and support which can be reassuring and comforting during the challenging times so then the therapist guides you that what needs to be you know uh, done uh, so then we go into the behavioral changes psychotherapy can assist individuals in identifying maladaptive behaviors that contribute to stress and replacing them with healthier alternatives so replacing your maladaptive behaviors to healthier alternative for example it can help address patterns of avoidance procrastination or self sabotage that exacerbates stress so uh, you know mm, uh, see if you are procrastinating or uh, because of stress or you have uh, you know overwhelming um, you know feelings or overwhelming anxiety or overwhelming load because of the stress that can also you know through behavioral changes these can also be changed but remember all these needs time so it is a time bound you know process so and what we do is next is building resilience so therapists work with individuals to strengthen their resilience and ability to bounce back from stressful situations by developing resilience individuals become more adaptable and better equipped to face future challenges and what we do is addressing underlying issues in some cases chronic stress may be linked to unresolved past experiences traumas or ongoing conflicts 
so addressing is important so uh, whether it is an acute stress whether it is chronic stress or chronic stress is linked to linked to any unresolved past experiences or traumas that is called uh, that i have addressed in the previous session which is called post traumatic stress disorder to, to trauma induced stress or ongoing emotional conflict so emotional conflicts resulted stress so what happens is psychotherapy provides a platform to explore and address these underlying issues facilitating healing and reducing stress triggers and improving communication skills effective communication is essential for managing stress in interpersonal relationships so what therapy does is therapy can improve uh, help in improving communication skills leading to healthier and more constructive interactions with others so which in turn reduces stress in personal and professional settings so in the psychotherapy there is a term called group therapy and support groups in the psychotherapy we do it sometimes what we do is we, we do it collectively it is called group therapy so participating in a group therapy or support groups focused on stress management allows individuals to connect with others facing similar challenges so sharing experiences listening to others and receiving feedback can be beneficial in reducing stress and feelings of isolation you don't feel isolated because similar uh, people with similar issues you know uh, will share their experiences you listen to others you get feedback and uh, and you get a feedback and support from the therapist as well there so attending group therapy and support groups also plays an important role and psychotherapy usually has long term effects that means Uh, psychotherapy effects often extend beyond stress management it can enhance overall mental health increase self awareness and improve self esteem leading to a more fulfilling and balanced life so what it does is it can enhance not only stress management it will enhance psychotherapy will enhance your overall mental health increase self awareness and improve self esteem leading to a more fulfilling and balanced life so remember that different forms of psychotherapy exist such as cognitive behavioral therapy mindfulness based techniques psychodynamic psychotherapy and more there are many psychotherapy so the choice of therapy may depend on individual's preferences specific needs and the therapist expertise so the effectiveness of psychotherapy in managing stress has been well documented so it is well documented and evidence based so making it a valuable resource for those seeking support and relief from the impact of stress on their lives so um see stress management techniques you know can be uh, how it can be classified is one is cognitive uh one is and next is behavioral third is physiological intervention so what we do is uh, we will explore these with simple case studies so cognitive interventions is you know um cognitive interventions focus on changing the way uh, individuals perceive and think about stressors that these techniques aim to challenge negative thought patterns and promote a more positive and adaptive mindset so cognitive interventions focus on changing usually focus on changing the way individuals you know perceive and think about the stressors how they think instead of uh, you know they thinking oh i have so much of workload then you can just break it down and make you know that negative thought patterns promote to a more positive and adaptive mindset so let's see a case study what is cognitive intervention so what we do in cognitive interventions so let's consider strawberry as an our uh, client so strawberry is a 32 year old marketing 
executive who experiences high levels of stress due to work related pressure so strawberry always experiences you know uh, high levels of stress due to work related pressure she fe often feels overwhelmed and anxious about meeting tight deadlines and dealing with demanding clients so this is her problem she she feels overwhelmed and anxious about meeting tight deadlines so she feels that she has very tight deadlines and uh, she feels it difficult to you know deal with demanding clients so what we do in the intervention so we advise strawberry to undergo cbt that is cognitive behavioral therapy what is this uh, we use this is a kind of cognitive intervention so strawberry works with therapist to identify negative thought patterns such as uh, you know she if she has like thoughts may um, you know maybe like i must be perfect at all times if i fail that it means that i'm not good enough she might have these thoughts what we do is in cbt we go into the core beliefs so what are what is the actual root cause which is affecting uh, you know um, strawberry from uh, you know affecting um, affecting strawberry and is making getting her into stress so what we do is the therapist helps strawberry reframe these thoughts into more realistic and balanced perspectives so uh, we uh, you know reframe the thoughts into realistic and balanced perspective by giving real by setting realistic goals smart goals and you know um, changing the thinking patterns and we also teach her coping strategies uh, such as problem solving and setting realistic expectations so, so being realistic and sustainable is important you know and what happens this is a case study so what happens over several weeks of cbt sessions strawberry starts to notice a shift in her thought patterns and emotional responses to the stress so what happens is she begins to feel more confident in her abilities and becomes better at managing her workload so this in turn re reduces strawberry stress levels and she feels more in control of her work and personal life and um, this is the outcome this may vary this is customizable this is an easy example of cognitive intervention you know this is just a case study um you know so that you understand that what we do as psychotherapists so behavioral intervention so what we do in in behavioral intervention is we focus on modifying behaviors and actions that contribute to stress see this is what strawberry did was strawberry had uh, you know strawberry was thinking in her mind uh, that uh, she is overwhelmed of her work and this was internal but what this behavioral intervention is this is external because of stress a person reacts to you know uh, environments the changes in the behavior so that um, that for that we have to you know get into behavioral intervention so what we do is these techniques aim to replace unhealthy coping mechanisms with more constructive and adaptive behaviors so um, we are giving um, the clients more constructive and adaptive behaviors so what happens is here is a case study of let's assume uh, apple so apple is a 45 year old it professional who experiences chronic stress so what he has is he copes with stress by turning into unhealthy habits because of stress he is turned to unhealthy habits unhealthy eating eating excessive drinking binge watching tv shows late into night so what is what happens here is his eating patterns change his lifestyle changes uh, you know his health is affected by excessive drinking and his sleep is affected by binge watching late until night and he is not getting sleep so this is for uh, see uh, stress is a part and 
with this to cope with the stress he is doing this so he has behavioral he has a behavioral effects of stress so here what we do is behavioral intervention what we do is uh, uh, you know, um, Apple participates in a stress management program that includes behavior modification techniques. So with the help of a counselor or a therapist, Apple identifies his stress triggers. So what is the root cause of stress? So identifying stress for every, you know, um, type of stress, for any type of stress, first step is to identify stress triggers and uh, identify what is happening because of that stress. So then what we do is the counselor helps him to set achievable goals for behavior changes. And this, mind you, this is not a day or two project. It requires certain amount of time, several weeks of therapy is required to, you know, uh, change the behavior, to, uh, you know, to note the behavioral changes and um, and also we what we do is the bad habits and the bad lifestyles lifestyle changes are converted into good uh, you know and incorporatable uh, changes the realistic and sustainable healthy uh, lifestyle and activities and um, we also help him to reduce the alcohol consumption and then finally to give up alcohol so this all this will take time so what happens as an outcome so apple adopts a ad, adopts healthier behaviors he notices improvements in his sleep quality and overall energy levels he finds that he is better equipped to deal with stressors in a more constructive way than he was doing it earlier and over time, John's, uh, you know, um, Apple's reliance on unhealthy coping strategies decreases and he feels more in control of his stress levels. So next is, um, this is one, this one is behavioral intervention. Next is physiological intervention. So in the physiological intervention, we focus on calming the body's stress and response, stress response and promoting relaxation. So these techniques aim to reduce the physical symptoms of stress, such as muscle tension and increased heart rate. So stress, not only we have dealt it in the previous session that stress or not only affects your mind it also affects your physical health it, um, it may also have symptoms so this physiological intervention helps in dealing the symptoms uh, you know related to stress such as muscle tension and increased heart rate so here um, vanilla vanilla is a 28 year old nurse who experiences high level of stress due to de the demanding nature of her job so she often feels physically tense and has difficulty relaxing even during her time off. So uh, this is the, um, all the examples we have taken is here is work related stress, but in different scenarios and different interventions. So here in the intervention for, uh, you know, vanilla, vanilla learns various uh, physiological interventions to manage her stress, such as progressive muscle relaxation, deep breathing techniques, mindfulness exercises, yoga. She practices these techniques regularly, both during her breaks at work and at home. Here it is inculcating uh, habits and inculcating changes and inculcating, uh, you know, mindfulness exercises exercises, yoga, physical, uh, physical activity, lifestyle, everything to manage the symptoms of stress. So here vanilla, what happens is as an outcome, vanilla incorporates these relaxation techniques in her daily routine. She starts to experience reduced muscle tension and improved sleep quality. She also notices a decrease in her overall anxiety levels. The physiological intervention helps her, you know, find moments of calm uh, amidst the busy and stressful aspects of the job. So combining cognitive, behavioral and 
physiological interventions can provide a comprehensive approach. This I've said separately. In some cases, what we do is for one person, for a client, all the interventions may might be required. Cognitive intervention, behavioral intervention, and physiological intervention. So uh, then it is a comprehensive approach to managing stress and promoting overall well-being. So, um, so these are the example case studies which I have given just for an examples. So next is how do uh, is stress manageable in Ayurveda? What does Ayurveda uh, has to say about you know um, uh, stress and how does Ayurveda helps in managing? See Ayurveda, the traditional system of uh, medicine. Um, our ancient Indian system of medicine, see, offers a holistic approach to manage and treating stress to a therapeutic technique known as Sattva Vajaya Chikitsa. I have spoken about Sattva Vajaya Chikitsa in my earlier sessions as well. So what is Sattva Vajaya Chikitsa? Sattva Vajaya Chikitsa is a specialized branch of Ayurveda that focuses on promoting mental well-being and emotional regulation or emotional balance. So it addresses stress by harmonizing the mind and emotions, mind, emotions and spirit. Okay, the term Sattva Vajaya is derived from, sans from the two Sanskrit words Sattva, which means purity or clarity of mind, Avajaya, which means control and mastery, that means mind control. The primary goal of Sattva Vajaya Chikitsa is to cultivate a positive and balanced state of mind leading to stress reduction and overall enhancement of mental health. Here's a detailed explanation. So how what we do is identifying imbalance. Here also in Ayurveda, you have to identify the problem. Identify is... See, Ayurvedic practitioners use the concept of doshas. There are, see, there are sharirika doshas, which are called vata, pitta and kapha, and manasika doshas, which are called rajas and tamas. So, and to understand an individual's constitution and identify any imbalances that may be contributing to stress. So, what we do is we see doshic imbalances, that is called doshic imbalances, and specific treatment strategies can be employed to restore harmony and alleviate stress. See, Ayurveda is a customizable approach, a unique and customizable approach, different for every person. You know, uh, so we have to identify what is the dosha imbalance or the guna imbalance and then treat accordingly to Ayurveda. Then first we have to understand the, for that first we have to understand the prakriti or individual constitution of a person. Like Ayurveda recognizes that each person has unique mind-body constitution known as doshas, as I have said, vata, pitta and kapha. So identifying and understanding, you know, once dosha helps identify the tendencies, stress triggers and appropriate stress management techniques. What we do is we take a detailed history of the patient whenever, uh, you know, Ayurvedic history taking takes time. Uh, you, whoever have gone to an Ayurvedic Vaidya or a doctor might have experienced this because they will take your detailed history to know your Prakruti and to assess your problem and to, you know, medi give medication and, and uh, wipe out the disease from the roots cause, from its root cause. So, and what happens is lifestyle recommendation. See, majorly Ayurveda emphasizes on the importance of balanced daily routine. See, daily routine and seasonal routine. The balance of daily routine according to Ayurveda is called Dinacharya. And seasonal routine is called Rutucharya. So, we uh, emphasize on Dinacharya and Rutucharya. And, you know, following these routines can promote overall well-being, reduce stress and improve resilience. So, then what is done is mind-body connection. So, Sattva Vajaya Chikitsa acknowledges the strong connection between the mind and body. It emphasizes that mental and emotional disturbances can manifest as physical ailments and vice versa. So treating stress in Ayurveda involves addressing both the mind and body. So to achieve overall well-being. 
so um you know and what is done is dietary recommendations so ayurveda emphasizes the role of a balanced diet in promoting mental health so foods that are considered sattvic pure and harmonious are recommended to help calm the mind and foster emotional balance so a sattvic diet typically includes fresh fruits vegetables whole grains nuts and dairy products so you will get to the dietary you know recommendation according to your prakriti and the lifestyle changes and there are some herbal remedies you know herbal and herbal mineral remedies uh, both the which is called shamana chikitsa uh you know ayurvedic practitioner may recommend specific herbal formulations which are also known as medhya rasayanas medhya rasayanas um, are you know uh, it is given to enhance memory cognition and mental clarity okay these herbs also help support the nervous system and also aid in managing you know stress so herbal mineral remedies next is meditation and pranayama so sattva vajaya chikitsa places significant emphasis on meditation and pranayama to calm the mind and promote mental clarity see uh, um, and regular practice of these techniques help individuals develop greater resi- greater resilience to stress and sometimes there is importance of mantra as well mantra chanting the chanting of specific ma- mantras or sacred sounds is believed to have a calming effect on the mind and can be used to reduce uh, you know stress and anxiety so mantra chanting and ayurvedic therapies such as certain therapies such as shirodhara shirodhara is pouring uh, pouring you know warm oil on the forehead um shirodhara so uh, on the on the head they pour warm oil based on your prakriti and based on your condition there are different oils poured on your head uh, on the forehead for different periods of time for different diseases so this is a therapy shirodhara the second is abhyanga abhyanga is ayurvedic oil massage so uh, and nasya nasya is nasal administration of herbal oils all these can help calm the nervous system uh, nasya is you know you administer um, herbal oils to your uh, um, herbal oils through your nostrils and uh, these are also done in various types and these can also this can also help in calming the nervous system and promoting relaxation in turn reducing and aiding in management of you know stress so next is um, panchakarma ayurveda also you know um uh, the ayurvedic detoxification it is not actually detox detoxification but it can be correlated to the de- ayurvedic detoxification or uh, purification so uh, panchakarma may be recommended to cleanse the body of accumulated toxins which can contribute to mental and emotional disturbances you know which uh, the toxins which are accumulated that contribute to emotional mental and emotional disturbances those are taken out by panchakarma panchakarma is um purificatory therapies there are five karma, uh, karmas basti nasya virechana vamana virechana and rakta mokshana so all these uh, five uh, panchakarmas uh, uh, can be administered to you according to your needs it is again customizable in ayurveda there is uh, uh, no protocol for uh, one size fits all is not applicable so one medicine fits all is uh, not possible so it is always unique and customizable and emotional counseling of course ayurvedic practitioners may offer emotional counseling and support to help individuals process and cope with stress related emotions effectively all these are the techniques i have discussed about all the techniques what does ayurveda do what does uh, psychotherapy do in the cognitive behavioral therapy and what all you can do to manage stress at home so uh you know um these are all uh, the techniques in general and uh, some of the nlp techniques can also play an important role you know in managing uh, um, stress but this we'll talk about in the the next session so
i think we have discussed the overall you know management of uh, stress uh, how it needs to be you know managed and um, that is it for today's session uh, thank you for staying tuned i'll be back soon with my next session and namaste for today